Welcome back to Master Math. Today we're going to be talking about some geometry, specifically the concept of pi and the circumference of a circle. The concept of pi, I knew this was going to be fun. I love pi. I love the concept of cherry pie. I love the concept of blueberry pie. And I'm particularly crazy about the concept of a little bit of ice cream on my pie. But today we're going to be talking about a Greek pie. This is a Greek symbol. And you pronounce it pi and you spell it P-I. And it does some pretty amazing things. We're going to learn about those today. Now remember... If you come to a part of the lesson that you have a little trouble understanding, hit the pause button, rewind a bit, and then watch that part of the video again. And when you come to a You Try It slide, hit the pause button, work out your answer, and then hit the forward key to move on to my answer. Now, let's get a slice of that pie. Well, are you ready to be horrified and amazed all at the same time? Well, here you go. Pi is a number that equals the number on the screen. That's a pretty big number, isn't it? 3.14159265358979. I mean, you could spend the rest of your life telling us all the numbers in pi and you would never get done. It goes on forever. And that's an amazing number. It goes on forever. Well, fortunately, you don't have to memorize or work with a number as long as the one on the screen here. All you got to do is use 3.14. That's just the simplified version of pi. Pi, or the Greek symbol shown there, equals 3.14. One, four. Well, what's pi mean? Where does it come from? Well, it's really kind of cool. It comes from this expression right here. The ratio of the circumference of a circle to the diameter of that circle equals pi, equals 3.14159. In other words, the distance around any circle divided by the distance across any circle always equals 3.14159. So you could write that a couple of different ways. We know that the circumference divided by the diameter equals pi, but we could rewrite that to say the circumference equals pi times the diameter. So if we knew what the diameter of this circle was, we could calculate what the circumference, what the distance around that circle was. If we knew the radius of the circle, the radius is half of the diameter, it's the distance from the middle to the outside of the circle. If we knew the radius, we could also calculate the circumference. It would be 2 pi r. And that should be easy for you to see because the diameter is 2 times the radius. So if I had this expression and I wanted to get rid of that d and put in 2 r, I'd get pi times 2 r, which I could rewrite as 2 pi r. So the circumference equals 2 times pi times the radius. Now if we had a circle that had a diameter of 10 inches and a radius of 5 inches, it would be real easy to calculate the circumference or the distance around that circle. It would simply be 3.14 times the diameter, or 10 inches, and that equals 31.4 inches. Or we could calculate it with the radius. It would be 2 times pi times the radius, which of course also equals 31.4 inches. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer.
Well, how do we figure out what the circumference of this circle is? We know the radius. And we know the formula, too. The formula is the circumference equals 2 pi times the radius. So all we have to do is put 15 feet in here where we've got our r, and it becomes c equals 2 times 3.14 times 15 which equals 94.2 feet. Well, how are we going to figure out what the circumference of the rotunda is? Well, again, we know the radius, and we know the formula. So all we have to do is put 25 feet into the formula, and we can figure out what the circumference is. The circumference is 2 pi r. And pi equals 3.14 and r equals 25 feet. So we, if we multiply 2 times 3.14 times 25 feet, we get 157 feet. This one's a little trickier than the other ones, but I think you can get it. Just remember, we're working on circumference, so I bet you got to figure out what the circumference of this uh, problem is. Try it after you hit the pause key, and then hit your forward key when you get finished to move on to the answer. Well, to help us solve this problem, it's always a good idea to CUCC, circle the numbers, and underline the question so we can focus in on, on the numbers and make sure we know what we've got to work with and understand what question we're really asking. And the question is, how long will it take for the blade to make a complete circle? Well, I think you probably understand that what we're talking about is how long it'll take the tip of the blade to go all the way around and get back to where it started. Now, I'm not a very good drawer, but that looks like a circle to me. And the circumference of the circle is the distance that that tip of the blade has to travel to get all the way around the circle. So if we knew the circumference of that circle, then knowing the speed that the tip of the blade was traveling, we could figure out how long will it take for the blade to make a complete circle. We also know the radius of the circle because the radius is the length of that blade. So, the circumference equals 2 pi r or approximately 75 feet. In other words, it's 75 feet all the way around uh, the path that the tip of that blade travels. And 75 feet divided by 5 feet per second, the speed that the tip of that blade's traveling around the circle, equals 15 seconds. So it would take about 15 seconds for that blade to go all the way around the turbine. Well, this one's going to make you think a little bit. What we're trying to do is get the distance around this semicircle. And there's two things you got to think about. First of all, you got to remember that a semicircle is half of a whole circle. So if I knew the circumference of the whole circle, I could take half of it and it would be that distance around the top of this shape, around the top of the semicircle. But then you've got to also remember that I've got another element to the perimeter, which is the base or that 12 centimeter line right down the middle. So with that in mind, I think you can solve this problem. The circumference of the entire circle would have been pi times the diameter or pi times 12 or 37.7 centimeters. Half of that circumference would be half of 37.7, or 18.8 .8 centimeters. Now, to that 18.8 .8 centimeters, which takes me from there to there, I've got to add that, or 12 centimeters. 
So when I add 12 to 18.8, I get 30.8 centimeters. Well, that's our lesson on the concept of pi and the circumference of a circle. I hope you learned a lot. Now let's test what you learned. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on pi and the circumference of a circle and try your skill there. Then go back and take the quiz on pi and the circumference of a circle. And if you do real well on both of those, I'm going to recommend to your mother that she give you a piece of cherry pie and put some ice cream on it. Have a good time, and I'll see you again soon.